Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. And of course, we have your number one political analyst, the one that we have dearly missed because he went on, he went away for the Voice of America training, but now he's back. And we're so excited to have Ezugu Chukudi with us here in the studio. It's good to have you, Chukudi. <laughs> Why do you keep laughing every time we introduce you like this? I don't get compliments all the time. Aww. So when I hear, we missed you. No, we definitely missed you. It makes me feel you. some type of way. <laughs> How was the Voice of America training? It was, it was very interesting. I mean, it was intense. 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. every day. Okay. Um, when is, sorry, well, yeah, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I, it, was, it was a new experience for me, and I enjoyed myself. And... I'm always happy for the opportunity to, you know, learn more, get to interact with people and appreciate the fact that in this business, we need to empower ourselves True. so that we can add value to society. And I, I learned a lot of new things. You know, I learned to critically... Um, in this era of fake news... Very true. ...critically assess information and not be quick to jump to conclusions. So I think I'm better off than I was before... I went on the Voice of America training. And better off, ready to give us the best of your analysis on news and trending affairs. Thank, Thank you. Good to much. have you back. Thank you. So let's go straight no, into... No, we did not say happy Tuesday. Tuesday. Let's not forget where we are coming from. I know, right? <laughs> You've been away for a while now. We're starting to forget our traditions. Yeah, yeah. But thank you for bringing me back in check. Thank you. Let's look at what's happening in the news. Very, very sad story. First of all, our thoughts and our prayers are with the parents, the family, and the rest of Nigeria because Leah Sharibu is one of ours. But not to forget Leah Sharibu as well as the other girls who have been kidnapped by Boko Haram. Now, remember that on the 19th day of February 2018, Leah Sharibu, amongst over 100 girls, were kidnapped in Dabchi, Yobe State. The other girls were released, except Leah Sharibu. Reports had it that she was not released because she refused to change her religion. Now, we're hearing that there is a 35-second voice audio recording that has been obtained by certain newspapers, and it was said that this is the voice of Leah Sharibu, who spoke in Hausa language, saying, and I quote, I am Leah Sharibu, the girl that was abducted in GGSS Dapchi. I am calling on the government and the people of Goodwill to intervene to get me out of my current situation. I also plead to members of the public to help my mother, my father, my younger brother and relatives. Kindly help me out of my predicament. I am begging you to treat me with compassion. I am calling on the government, particularly the president, to pity me and get me out of this serious situation. Thank you. Chukudi, have we done enough with regards to trying to get Leah out? I don't think that the conversation, you know, was on the front burner. At the time when the, the kidnap had happened, every day we're hearing talks about it, the Dapchi girls, the Dapchi girls. But after a while, the first set came out, came out Leah Sharibu, people were praying for her in churches, in mosques, in all sorts of settings. But after a while, it's calmed down. So have we really done enough in trying to get Leah out? In all honesty, you know, Nigeria as a country has suffered terribly. And this is owing to the failure of leadership. And when a great country with abundant human and natural resources suffers, the people who are supposed to enjoy the dividends of, you know, democracy or democratic rule are going to be worse off for it. Now, there are loads of context to this discussion. And it's not just about Leah Sharibu. You would recall that, you know, in 2014, one very sad incident happened in Buniyadi where young boys you know, were gunned down by cowards who call themselves insurgents. Now, a year later, we saw this same incident play out in Chibok. And just seven months ago, we also had the Dapchi experience. Now, what does this tell you of leadership? And when I talk about leadership, I'm not just referring to the People's Democratic Party or the All Progressives Congress. I'm looking at government as an embodiment of people who are supposed to represent the interest of the Nigerian people. Now, for seven months, the young lady has been gone. And what we have seen in Nigeria is the reflection of who we are onto the next one. They are easily distracted. For two we weeks, you know, the hashtag, and now everyone has moved on. And that is, you know, it lends credence to the saying that if you see a corpse, so long as you have no, you know, relation to that corpse, it might as well be a, a log, log of, of wood. wood. But if you feel a connection, it's a problem. Now, as Nigerians, what we must do is begin to see ourselves as a people that are united by the pains and suffering and sorrow that we have to bear. Punishment, poverty, penury, blackouts, bad roads, insecurity, you know, derelict infrastructure are things that we all share. If as Nigerians we begin to see this as speaking up with one voice to see how we can resolve these issues, the better for us. 
When I heard, I don't understand, you know, the Hausa language, but when I heard the rising and the fall of Emotion her voice, beneath that. I felt really very, very bad. Speaking about hearing the rising and the falling of her voice, we heard reports that the government has come out to say that they want to investigate the authenticity of the audio clip. Some people have said that was an insensitive reaction. At the time, the reaction should be, we are working on it. Now, they've come out to say that they are investigating the authenticity of the audio clip, and then they will give you a reaction after that. Does that not make it look like, you know, they're not feeling the plight and the pains of those who are, who are earnestly waiting for Leah? Well, if we're, if we're going to be fair, most times when we say the government, it's good that we emphasize. So it doesn't appear like, you know, the president came out to say, no. you understand? It was now, the Minister of Information. Well, the minister, even the Minister for Information, it's not his responsibility to say we are investigating. You understand? Now, you have the DSS, whose responsibility is to ensure that, you know, our territorial integrity, um, integ um, the corporate existence of our country is not breached. And they must ensure that, you know, whether external or internal uh, issues of security, they are on top of it. It is their responsibility. And they're there's, the ones investigating. There's nothing wrong in investigating. But that is not even what we want to hear. What we want to hear is that Leah Sharibu has been rescued. I'm not saying we'll be rescued, has been rescued. What will even, what, what even make us happier is when we know that the only crime that these children commit just by going to school to get education, which is supposed to be the bedrock of a nation's existence, is not one in which a handful or a band of criminals will just come into a community and take our children away from us. Now, governments must see this. And when I say government, I always emphasize, most times people politicize issues. We are quick to look at it from the umbrella or the broom perspective, rather than from the human perspective or the Nigerian point of view. If we begin to see issues from the Nigerian point of view, then never again we will have instances of people who cannot fight with me one on one. Because I've seen some of their pictures when our soldiers deal with them and kill them. Some of those people are people that if, I'm very sure that I can, I can beat up, I can beat two of them at the same time. You know, people who are fueled by tramadol and whatever drug and brandishing AK-47 and think that they are powerful people. Now, what we must do is ensure that, it, you know, the approach is one in which we do everything. We ensure that our children are safe in schools because, I mean, the trauma is one in which the child says, I don't want to go to school again. And education is the bedrock of a nation's existence, number two. We must ensure that we create employment. So that looking at Nigeria's population demographics, over 60% that are 30 years and below are gainfully employed, or they would want to do something with their life. Somebody who is, is able-bodied, that cannot feed himself, but the person wants to work. If you give the person an AK-47, that the person knows that I can eat three times a day, and this weapon gives me some sort of power over anybody, the person will take that opportunity. So what we must do is ensure that we bury all these, you know, partisan sentiments. Oh, it's in the north, it's in the south, it's their problem, it's our problem. Let's use it to campaign so that we can win elections and deal with these issues squarely because insecurity does not have, it does not have any register where you mm -hmm. call and say, who voted for who? Who were these people? Let's kill these people. If we are all faced with threats of insecurity, we must ensure that as a people, we find a lasting solution to this problem. So now the focus should be on rescuing Leah Sharibu and... Every Nigerian child. I was going to mention and that. And every Nigerian that has been abducted. We must also ensure that we reintegrate into society people who have been displaced by this form, all this insurg insurgency and terrorism that has, you know, ravaged the northeast, on, or not just the northern part of Nigeria. And most importantly, we must ensure that insecurity becomes a thing of the past. How? When we invest in human capital development. As a young man, if I, if I am gainfully employed, nothing would end, no crime will not entice me. We know that human, you know, want is insatiable. People are greedy. They would want to do all that they can do. But you must make it very difficult for them to choose this option as the easiest way out. So for now, it is not just about the hashtag free Leah Sharibu. The government must be up and doing free Leah Sharibu, free our girls, free every Nigeria that has been abducted, reintegrate those who have been displaced into society and ensure that there is security in our great country, Nigeria. I mean, insecurity is a major problem that has plagued Nigerians, and we must not deny the fact that insecurity has also affected our economy. Mm -hmm. I mean, reports just came out yesterday uh, saying that our GDP has slowed, slowed down in Q2, and there are several factors that slow down the GDP. So these are some of the things we must look at. We want to encourage foreign direct investment. We want, we want to encourage people to come into Nigeria, invest in our
our country, stay in our country. But how do they come and do this? When they know that, first of all, the country is not as safe as it claims to be, there's no power, there's several other challenges that we're dealing with. We'll come back to look at the third story of Nigeria's population and some of the challenges that it faces. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.